taking this opportunity to invite back an old good friend of this show, good old friend of the show, Dr. Bob Hieronymus joins us right now. Dr. Bob, come on in here. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Bob, nice of course, watch your step as always and watch Marty's chair. Uh, Dr. Bob, of course, host of <laughs> 21st learned how to watch Century Radio uh, uh, every Sunday on WCBM. I wanted to America's truly uh, great free thinkers and a man who for years has come on this show and said, the government knows of other life in this universe, of other life in the solar system. You have mentioned Mars countless times. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest about it, some who might be more conservative thinkers, I'm sure, have looked at you and snickered at some of your comments. And all I can say is, now with this news this week, he who laughs last, laughs best. Well, part of the story is being told, no doubt about it. Part of the story is being told. And it's a much older story than NASA is making it out. I fact, I, I'm sorry, I faxed you 627 pages <laughs> the other day. Sorry, I, I, the, the key problem is this, is that there is so much research that in the major media is not covering. And what is not being told is that in 1966, this research was begun by Dr. Bartholomew Nagy. On this particular meteorite? No, okay. on another meteorite. Okay, okay. Uh, he came to the same conclusions NASA did in 1975. Now, he, because he's from the Netherlands and he's from the Europe, he doesn't know what he's talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then, of course, this work was then picked up in uh, the late 80s, 89, with the Open University in Great Britain. And they came to the conclusions, and I, I faxed you these articles so, uh, just so that you would have them on hand, proving that life was on Mars through the same meteorites. Now, a lot of folks are saying, how come we know these things are from Mars? Right? That's a, that's a darn good question. Yeah, how do you the know the meteorite comes from Because there. the gases that are trapped mm -hmm. within these meteorites match the atmosphere of Mars. They have a signature, as it's called. But yeah. the question now is, all right, if we, if we knew about There's the research on rocks like this, meteors like this, uh, you're saying back into the 60s, why now is this, and this is incredible news. Scientists yeah, sure. all over the world are saying, okay, now we've got to rethink a lot. I'd say it's one of the top ten stories of the century, by the way. Yeah. Well, before, uh, let's thought, go back to NASA. NASA is not the same NASA we grew up with in the 60s and the 70s. In the 80s, I hate to say this under the Reagan administration, because my dear mother-in-law, Lynn P. Meyerhoff, was a major supporter of the Republican Party. Treasure. But Reagan really allowed major changes in NASA turning it more into a military type of installation than what we know of it I think it, I think it was headed for using Star Wars, yeah. Yeah. So after that happened, uh, you had a, a, a report, uh, before that happened, a report called the Brookings Institute, which I brought on, oh, the six show months you ago. Had, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah which basically <laughs> discussed what NASA would suppress if they found uh, extraterrestrial life because of what how it would affect consciousness of of religions economic systems scientists etc you've said that so, before yeah, yeah. Uh, and and there are vested interests this is the key thing in all science you know most of us uh, who grew up with NASA in the, in the 60s and the 70s we were in, I don't think vested interests were a big thing then. NASA was, whenever they took photographs of the moon or the Mars, they showed them to us right away. Right. That's no longer the case. There are laws saying, basically, they will not show us the Mars pictures or anything else for at least nine months. Because? Because they the control that particular information. The oh, yeah. they, they are not interested in. We've just done a one, and I don't know what that was. Oh, that, that was, was a former administrator of NASA, by the way. Yes. Right. yes. He's now a wrestler. Well, look at, wrestler. let's take Dan Golden, <laughs> who is the administrator of NASA. Okay. Dan Golden, one year ago, over a year ago, he was given uh, this report by. Uh, Vince DiPietro, who wrote this particular book with Dr. John Brandenburg. I remember when we had this face on. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was given the report on the Martian meteorites over a year ago. He said nothing. The thing I am very unhappy about is that NASA has ignored all these other researchers who came to the same conclusions, but they were not in NASA's corner. And remember the releases that just came out? They said, we do not want these scientists talking about this until... Saturday or when, then exactly, of course, and they okay. couldn't keep a lid on it. The, yeah. the, the yeah. story was actually embargoed, and, and some media just went ahead and said the heck with but, the embargo and put it out. Okay, yeah. they, okay. They, they have found a fossil of a, what appears to be a maggot in this meteorite. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and nothing's collapsed. The world's religions haven't collapsed, and, and things like that. Well, that's because there, uh, there's a major discussion on keeping this 
uh, when the truth comes out, there are three different types of stages. One is that at first it's ridiculed. Okay. You know, it made, made fun of. We're, we're still ending that stage. <coughs> After that stage comes out and outright uh, opposition. Opposition that you're going to see opposition to this theory like you've never believed okay, I haven't before. Seen it yet. I've seen you skepticism. Will, <clears throat> you will. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan will come out. Not skepticism. Op uh, opposition, not just skepticism. Not just skepticism. No, total okay. opposition because right. this idea, this theory, uh, is going to shake a lot of individuals from the standpoint of we've always known there's other life in parts of different parts of the universe, but so close by. Now, what is really scary about this situation is. I'm sorry. Well, it's the third stage. Then the third the stage is, uh, yes, we knew it all the time. And okay. we'll hit that maybe in about five or ten years. Do you think uh, so? Yeah. Well, they're going to be exploring between now and five yes, or ten years. Yes, right. because so uh, the, uh, one of the shows that, that we're working on right now is a two-hour special, which will be aired sometime in the fall worldwide, dealing with Mars. And we've, we've covered the particular area that... that dealing with these meteorites mm -hmm. we had because we had that information a year or two ago well, what's it mean to me that there was life 40 billion years ago on mars well it means that instead of the old theory that one out of a million 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 planets in the universe could have life it now means that maybe one out of a million and it's next door yes that's <laughs> right because we did not and sagan does not Sorry. No, go, go ahead, Sagan. Sagan does not oppose life being out there somewhere billions and billions of miles away where it will never come here. All right. Right. But he does oppose the fact that it'll, it'll get here <laughs> within right. our lifetimes. Okay, okay. we've got about a minute left, but I, I want to bring up one other quick thing. And NASA talked about this in the press conference of seeding. Now, this is a very interesting concept. What if a meteorite from Mars hit the Earth in the primordial stage? And it was those microbes that started life on Earth, or vice okay. versa, yeah. that something from Earth hit Mars, and that's what they're saying. It's called planetary seeding. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's an excellent theory. I don't think it's. I don't think it necessarily happened. You come in with a library. I love you. Yeah. So well, much the research. problem is, you come in and I apologize great. for no, that. It's, okay. it's just that this is stuff that most people in America do not see. This is the most important book put out in 1996 by. Uh, uh, Cosmic Courtney Voyage. Brown is called Cosmic Voyage, and this is an individual uh, whom we are working with within this two-hour special. Wait till you see what is known about the planet Mars. There are going to be some statements that you will not believe, but in years to come are going to be corroborated, that there oh. was a civilization on Mars, that this civilization died out. I know you're very in tune with the environment and the problems we have in the environment. The same kind of problems we're going to have on the, on the Earth with the greenhouse effect and the heating is the same problems they had on Mars, which annihilated their civilization. Can I say yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk yeah. about this in just a second, oh. but I just want to thank you for coming in because oh, you're a for great friend me. of this show. Okay, and you've been, you've been thanks coming thanks. on here and saying this for years now. Well, I'll still be saying it for years. I've been saying this stuff since 1968. I'm telling you. I'm getting to be an old man. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> you. Hey, listen. You're still going to tie it in with UFOs, though, yes. somehow. Yes. Listen, yeah. I just want to point out your wife, Zoe Hieronymus, heard every day on WCVM. Yes. There's a big thing out at the zoo today honoring her mother, very honestly, yes. Lynn yeah. Meyerhoff, yeah. who helped establish uh, the best children's zoo in the country. Yep. Yeah. And uh, 10 o'clock today, walk up to the zoo, first 200 kids just say, Zoe sent me, get him free. And All they right. get a t-shirt. And they get a t-shirt. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, that, that, and that, that children's zoo, by the way, is just Isn't it terrific? Spectacular. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. Ms. Lynn P. Meyerhoff loved animals. I drive her car. Still? Yep. 1983 Mercedes. She loved animals. Right. Thought you marry your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. Hey, we, what is that? And we, you, you, we, you can talk about Mars on CBM on Sunday night, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh no, we're going to talk about crop circles in Maryland, and we're going to oh. touch on the Mars thing. Crop okay. circles in, in Maryland. Maryland. Yep. Yeah. We just, we are we're going to break this. By the way, Zoe broke this story on Martian meteorites one year ago. One year ago, she talked with Vince DiPietro and broke the story. Right. See all those people doing this? We yeah, got, we got to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're coming yes. back on the show in a month and a half or so to talk about crop circles and alien abductions in Maryland. Okay. Yes. You and say that it has happened. Yes, it has. Okay. We got photographs of some of the craft. Okay, 629. That's a big statement. Yeah. 629. Well. All right. Listen, coming up, we're going to take a look at your exclusive back. You're on the five-day forecast and coffee with this day. Not only is this man a free thinker, he's also a father, and you'll appreciate this coffee with a way to teach kids to ride a bike safely. We'll explain. And if you find yeah. yourself on the launch pad, here's Chuck. Thanks.